So this video is integrated to math analysis um, RFF number five for semester one. Okay, so we want to, on number one, find x to the nearest hundredth. That means two numbers after the decimal accuracy. This is 32 degrees. This, from 32 degrees, this x is opposite. And the 18 is your hypotenuse. So we have SOPATOA. And looking at this, what I have is opposite and hypotenuse, so I've got sine. So I'm going to do sine of 32 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. I'm going to multiply both sides by 18, so I'm going to get 18 sine 32 is equal to x. And I end up getting um, 18 sine 32, again, always make sure your calculator is in degrees, um, 9.54 for our x. Okay. On uh, number two, um, find the x-intercepts. So I'm going to make x zero, and I'm going to factor this. And so what multiplies to 12 and adds to negative 8? That is going to be an x minus 6 and an x minus 2. So I have an x-intercept at 6 and I have an x-intercept at 2. Okay. On 3, more practice with writing the equation of a quadratic. So we've got these zeros. Um, our x-intercepts of y plus a, the negative 2 comes from an x plus 2, a 3 comes from an x minus 3, and then I'm going to put in a point, so 0, negative 6 is a nice one, and so I got negative 6 is equal to a, 0 plus 2, 0 minus 3. Now a lot of these ones we've been doing, our a keeps on being a negative 1, that is not always the case. You definitely want to go through this process and try it out. I am going to get a negative 6 here, which means my a is again going to be 1. But again, that does not always happen. So now I'm going to work this out, and I'm basically going to multiply my um, 2. I'm going to add my 2 and my negative 3 together, and then I'm going to multiply my 2 and my negative 3 together. So I am going to get an x squared. When I add them, negative x. When I multiply them, negative 6. And that's our equation. On number 4, okay, quadratic formula, okay, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, okay. So, um, I am going to have x equal, my b is negative 2, so this is going to be a positive 2, plus or minus the square root. Put your negative 2 squared, put that negative 2 in parentheses, um, minus 4 times my a, which is 4, and my c, which is negative 5, all over 2 times my a, which is 4. And then I'm going to get 2 plus or minus. I'm going to put that in my calculator. Um, and I'm going to get um, 4 minus 4 times 4 times a negative 5. I get an 84. Now, 84 I can clean up. I know for sure a 4 can go into an 8 and a 4. Okay. Um, so I know for sure a 4. And 84 divided by 4 is 21. So this root 84 is really a root 4 times a root 21. 21 is a 7, 3. I cannot break that down to any nice squares. So it's going to clean up to a 2 root 21. And so this is going to be x is equal to 2 plus or minus, and instead of the root 84, 2 root 21 over 8. And I can simplify 
everything is divisible by two here. So this is gonna be one plus or minus one root 21 over four. So again, I divided each of those numbers, the two on top, the two and the two, and then the eight on bottom by two because they're all divisible by two. Um, next one, number five. So area of a parallelogram, remember they're trying to fool you with the six, that is not the height. Okay, that is a slant height. We need the straight up and down perpendicular to the base height. So you're gonna take three times 10, 30. On number six, um, which of the triangles has the greater area, justify. So on this one, you're gonna take the base and height, because they have to be perpendicular. So it's gonna be base times height divided by two. So the area of this is gonna be six. Now for this one, um, this is the base four. And this, if I was to continue out and go perpendicular, Three is going to be the height, four is going to be the base. So it's going to be three times four divided by two is six. So in this case, both of these ended up being the same. Same area. Um, on number seven, um, the distance between two points, five comma two and three comma negative three. So I think I wrote this in the, one of the other videos, distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared, where you basically subtract your x's plus y2 minus y1 squared. Now, if you're looking at these points, and I'm plotting these very roughly, and I'm plotting three, negative three, let's say that this is three, negative three, and five comma two, let's just say that this is five comma two, and I want the distance between them, okay, from here to here, I can make a right triangle and what's happening is when I am looking at the vertical, okay, the vertical, I'm looking at the height of two. Let me just highlight this. The height of two and the height down here of negative three. So I'm two above and three below. That is going to give me, whoops, let me get a, let me write with. That is going to get me, um, five here. Um, and then when I'm looking at my y's, I mean, sorry, my x's, and I'm looking at my five and my three. So um, three to five is going to be two. Whoops, I forgot my pen. Two. So then what I'm going to do is 5 squared plus 2 squared equals c squared, uh, or distance squared, honestly. Here, I'll put d for distance squared. So I get 29 is equal to d squared. So the square root of 29 is equal to your distance. On number 8, okay, we're solving um, I think this is, yeah, this is going to be factorable looking at these numbers. 3x squared and negative 6. So it needs to multiply to a negative 18x squared, add to a 7x, and that is going to be a um, 9x and a negative 2x. So 9x, negative 2x. And so I have three X is gonna go here, X here, minus two plus three. So I'm gonna have three X minus two equals, uh, sorry, I forgot my other factor. And X plus three equals zero. 
So x is 2 thirds and x is negative 3. Okay, on number 9. Okay, so this time we have um, 17 slips of paper. Okay, I'm just going to write this out since that's not going to be a nice like box or rectangle. So we're going to have, I'm going to write out the odds because we want, let's see, a box contains 17 slips of paper with the numbers 1 through 17 written on them. What is the probability of selecting an, oh, we want even numbers this time. Wow, they're filling me this time. Even numbers. Um, and the number eight, or the number, or the number eight. So even numbers, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay, so if I'm just numbering, the, I'm just counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and you'll notice eight is already listed here, so we don't have to count eight again. So it's going to be eight out of 17. On number 10, um, again, we want to make this into a perfect square. So I'm going to take 10, which is my B, take half of 10, which is five, and then I'm going to square that, which is 25, and that's what's going to go here. So on number 11, okay, we have a perfect square equation that we're solving. So I'm going to square root both sides so I get x minus 5 equal plus or minus 6. So x is equal to 5 plus or minus 6. So I'm going to get an 11 and I'm going to get a negative 1. On 13, um, we have to decide if the angle one and two are complementary, supplementary, or congruent. So these are going to be congruent because they're alternate interior angles. Um, on B, one and two, these are going to be supplementary, assuming that this is parallel, okay? So I'm going to put forgot parallel. We need this to be parallel. Otherwise, we don't have enough information. So with that, that's going to make this be supplementary. Let me scoot this over a little bit. Supplementary. And on C, um, this is 90 degrees, and so one and two are going to be complementary. They have to add to the other 90 degrees. Okay, I think those are the same as the ones we had in the other worksheet. Okay, so let's take a peek at 14. Let me make sure that I do all of it. Oh, I forgot 12. Okay, so on number 12, okay, backtracking to 12. Um, I have a square that has an area of 27. We want to find the length of the side. So I'm going to call this x and x. So I have x squared equals 27. I take the square root. I get the square root of 27. And if I'm thinking about the squares, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 9 goes into this. So I'm going to have a root 9 times a root 3. So this is going to be 3 root 3 once it's simplified. Um, number 14. Um, we're going to say, are these congruent and justify? Okay, so I'm just going to kind of color code. That is reflexive because it's the same in both triangles. Um, this here, that is given, okay, and then since we have a right triangle, we have here hypotenuse lake, and that's why those are congruent. 
on B, reflexive, okay, because it's in both triangles. Um, for this, I have this parallel line, this parallel line with that transversal. So I have um, angle LNK and MKN, and that is alternate interior angles. I also have this parallel line, this parallel line with this transversal, and that's going to be alternate interior angles. And then looking at the picture, and here, let me put my blue mark in here. Um, looking at the picture, I have angle side angle. That is going to be Y. Okay, and on number 15, um, which line below is parallel? Which one is perpendicular? Okay, so if I'm looking at my slope, which is three fourths, um, my parallel one, this one here is going to be parallel because parallel lines have the same slope. And this one here, where it's a negative reciprocal, this is going to be perpendicular. Because you flip the slope and you make it opposite. And I believe that is the end of number five.